picking up chapter 5, or uh, section 5.1, the whole purpose behind it was recognizing if a function is what's called one to one. Um, if a function is what's called one to one, it means that it will pass the horizontal line test, which means that when you go and graph the inverse function, it would pass the vertical line test. Um, the algebra behind that is this right here. This is the algebra behind a function being one to one. Um, you plug A in and you plug B in and you just manipulate it to end up with A equals B. So if a function passes the horizontal line test, this should work out to be A equals B. We also learned how to find the inverse function and that's simply switching the X and the Y coordinates and solving for Y. Go to this slide right here. Okay, this slide is saying, let me show you the relationship between a function and its inverse function in terms of um, the algebra. Look right here at this mess. You'll have to think back, I don't know what chapter it was. Do y'all remember when we were doing f of g of x yeah. and it meant you would write function f first <clears throat> let's say it was um, 2x plus 3 and then you would beep out the x 2 plus 3 and then you would plug function g in let's say it's x minus 1 and then you would clean it up y'all remember that i don't remember what chapter it was but we we did that in one of our chapters that is the exact same thing here. Instead of it being function f and function g, it's function f and its potential inverse, okay? And they want you to verify that they are inverses of each other. How do you verify it? You find the f inverse of f. I have to talk slow because it sounds like I'm repeating myself. Then you find the f of f inverse, and you should both end up with x. Okay? So let me show you what I mean by this. Let's find, I will start with f of f inverse. Don't write big here. <coughs> Remind yourself that this means write that function you see first. Write it down. So you got 5x plus 8. Then you're going to beep out, then you're going to beep out the x. So you've got 5 plus 8. Right? In the beep, you're going to plug in the second function. This is what's considered your input. Whatever's listed second. So I'm going to plug in x minus 8 all over 5. Be careful here. Think smarter, not harder. I don't want to shove this giant 5 next to this tiny fraction like that because then it kind of confuses me as to how I'm going to proceed, right? Um, I think I've said it to y'all before. Whenever you're dealing with a fraction next to something that's not a fraction, line it up like if it's a number that's not a fraction it's understood to be over what y'all one so that's the numerator so i want to line that five up with just the x minus eight which means i need to fix my parentheses because they're not quite big enough so i'm going to fix them to be kind of a two layer all right i'm going to plug x minus eight over five now, if I write it like that, my mind immediately sees, oh, I have 5 in the numerator, I have 5 in the denominator, separated by multiplication, so they cancel. So it helps to write it in a way that kind of guides you with how to clean it up. Once you plug it in, the goal is now clean it up and see if you get the x. 
Don't clean it up out of order. You've got to clean it up in the correct order. So this right here cancels. I'm left with x minus 8 on top and then that plus 8 at the end. And of course, that cancels, right? And I get x. <coughs> Now it's not enough to go just that direction. Now you have to go the other direction where you take these two and you swap them and you repeat. So now we're going to find F inverse of F. So write F inverse down first. We got X minus 8 all over 5. We're going to beep out the X. So beep minus 8 all over 5. And in the beep I'm going to put what? 5X plus 8. Now do not cancel those 5's there. Um, that's different. The 5 in the top is attached to the X, and it's embedded within parentheses, um, also attached to the plus 8. This 5 on the bottom down here, when we were on this problem, this part, that 5 in the front was attached just by multiplication, which is why you were able to do that. You cannot cancel the 5's here like that yet. Um, what happened to the 8's? They canceled. And then see, now you can see that the 5 on top is attached by multiplication and there's nothing else with it. There's no plus or minus sign. So the 5's cancel and you end up with X. <coughs> now, as easy as that looks, my math lab makes it stressful. I'm going to pull up my math lab and show you it's number 14. I'm going to show it to you completed so you can get an idea of where you're going to go with this question. And there's only one of those on the homework. Yeah, I can just wait. I'm good. Oh, I did it again. I'm sorry. If y'all want to pull number 14 up now and try it, that way, you know, you got one more. One problem done. So fourteen. is 4 over 7x plus 1 and 7x minus 7 um, all over 4. Does anybody else have that? Sometimes they, they do repeat the same numbers. Um, stand by. Let me just send this real quick. to just X. 
Now it's going to say they want you to start with F inverse of F. And then it's saying right here, what does that mean? So if you look at this, and this is where I, I don't like this program. This is going to be the same answer for every single person. So if you're doing number 14 with me right now, um, I'm helping you. This is saying, what does that mean? That's what it's asking. And the question, the answer is, it means I'm fixing to take one and plug it into the other, right? Okay, so it's not the division of them, it's not the subtraction of them, it's not the addition of them. It's one is embedded within the other. You see that answer choice? And then now it's going to say, well, why? What's your reason? Well, it's because it's definition of, oh, Lord, it's just composition. So this is nitpicky. It should be definition of composition of functions. The next step is now going to say, okay, start it. It's going to say, so what does this look like? Now, let me explain how they have it arranged. Notice that F inverse is on the outside, and then in here they have stuff on the inside. So for my particular problem, F inverse is the giant fraction, and then F of X is 8 over 9X. That would be 9 times f of x. I know, I don't like it. It's asking you to plug it in, but I don't, this, this is, F inverse, so this is not right. It would be plugged in, but no, I don't have that. I don't have it. It's the one. It's the one without F of X written. Look at all. Well, no, that one's messed up too. That's the inverse. Look at the difference. I'm going to mark it. This can't be it. Oh, it disappeared. Okay, let me go back. These, there's no way to do it and record the video. So in the video, if you're watching, it's the first one cannot be it, and the third one cannot be it, because if you notice, they typed in, like here, this says F inverse, and this says F. That's not it, right? Um, the idea is the inverse is getting, um, I'm plugging in the function f of x. So then look at the other two. Look at the difference between them. Right? The input was f. My f is 8 over 9x plus 1. So my answer should be either, what, number 2 or number 4? Number 2, because mine's 8 over 9x plus 1. Right? This, number four, is the inverse function, and it's right next to the invert, and that's not right. We're not plugging inverse within inverse, so it would be this one. And now it's going to say, what did you just do? Well, I just substituted f of x in to the problem. Does that make sense? Um, well, yeah, you're going to have different functions. Um, let's do this. Look up here. It just changed my whole problem. It's so weird. Um, look up here. I'm going to take 14 off just so you're not getting caught up in the nitpickiness of the my math lab. 
When I went and did the problem on that slide, when I did this, did you understand it? Did you, like, did you understand how I set it up, how I plugged it in, how I cleaned it up, and then I went the other direction? Okay. Looking at this, this is, I'll take this one off because of the nitpickiness of it. They're, they're making you show every single, like, process, thought process, and if you go back to, like, this, because we already understand it, like I was done in four steps, and they're requiring 10. So um, I'll, take, I'll take 14 off so you don't have to worry about it. Um, what's important is that slide right there. Did you, can you show, not that slide, sorry, that slide. Can you show me that? Um, if I handed you uh, a question and I said, hey, here's f of x and here's f inverse, could you show me the algebra behind that one equals x and the other one equals x? Can you do that? Um, let's practice. Go right to this slide. Repeat it. Let's, we didn't write anything on this slide. so. Show me that f of f inverse equals x, and then show me that f inverse of f equals x with these two problems. And let's see if you can do it. And while you do that, I'll go take 14 off the homework because... 14 will make you hate math, and I don't want you to hate math. sound? I know. I don't know why it does that sometimes. Oh, it's not my fridge. It's like the building. If it does not come to X, it means, it could mean you did it wrong, but it means that they are not actually inverses of each other. Yeah. Yeah, that's the building that's making that noise. It's over there. That's what they, they push that when they are coming to your head. And my, my button wasn't working. So then they had to run like to the next floor. <laughs> well, it just alerts the front office and you're supposed to only use it if it's an emergency. So that they'll, they'll know that, okay, I've come through this, somebody needs attention or admin, you know, it's more. This is why I don't use it last year. I had a testing well, I don't know that I did officer, but that is a kid. That's a tug of war. Oh, shoot. But that's a tug of war, and I don't get in those. And I don't blame them. Like, if, if 
I say hand it to me and you don't, then it's not my problem. I'll go straight to someone else. I'm just going to get the last one. Uh, yeah. All right, let me see if you got it. This means right function F first. You're going to beep it out. I'm going to make my beep two stories because I'm fixing to put a fraction in. Then plug the input in. And now you clean up what you can. So I quit. That cleans up. You would be left with x plus 3, this is really annoying how it's not writing everything. And then those clean up, and you are left with x. Now, it's not enough that one way works. You have to check both, because there are instances where one way works, but the other way doesn't. And when that happens, you would say, these actually are not inverses of each other. Um, all right, so here, write the inverse out the x, plug in um, function f, this is your input, so that's 2x minus 3, so the minus 3 plus 3 cancels, and again we end up with x. Alright, we're done with 5, 1. We're going to look at 5, 2 where we're getting into um, logs. And exponents. Well, and that was actually so funny that you just said that. Um, I was fixing the code. Something. Thank you. 